Welcome back. Tom Harbin here with you, and uh, very happy to have with us on the line Dr. Tony Engrafia, uh, Ph.D., P.E. He's the Dwight C. Baum Professor of Engineering Emeritus and Vice Presidential Teaching Fellow at Cornell University, the co-editor-in-chief of Engineering Fracture Mechanics, and the founding and past president of PSE Healthy Energy, Inc. Uh, he teaches at Cornell, cornell.edu, and you can tweet him at Cornell. Dr. Engrafia, welcome to the program. Glad to be back with you again, Tom. Great to have you. Um, yesterday, somebody called in and asked the question, um, is it possible that people who live in Oklahoma could sue the fracking companies because of uh, damage to their home because of the explosion of earthquakes in Oklahoma? And, I, and my immediate response was, well, Scott Pruitt used to be the attorney general. I, I think he would have had a say in that and he would have prevented it. He isn't any longer. But then I... Then I was, A, I don't know if you can actually prove that the fracking is leading to these, number one. And number two, I don't know what the mechanism is for, for going after that. And so um, Sean said, well, Tony Graffio will know. So if I may, what's the situation? Well, you ask two questions. I'm certainly not an expert on the legalities, mm -hmm. but I can certainly give you an opinion about the first part of the question. Can okay. you prove that oil and gas activities in the state of Oklahoma are the cause for the unbelievably large increase in the frequency and the magnitude of earthquakes, actually more accurately called induced seismic events, human-induced seismic events, uh, over the last, past five years or so. It, it, yes, the science is in. There's consensus. Texans don't believe it, but Oklahomans now do. Uh, the injection of waste, liquid waste, uh, contaminated water, from oil and gas development in Oklahoma into waste injection wells is the cause of this induced seismicity uh, and all the consequences in Oklahoma. There is no longer a scientific doubt. Of course, nowadays, uh, <laughs> it's easy to doubt science. And since you brought up Scott Pruin's name, allow me to go a little bit farther here before you ask the next question. Sure. I think we can triangulate uh, a very unfortunate irony here. I thought you were going to ask me about wildfires in Oklahoma. Oklahoma, parts of Oklahoma are now in, in a state of emergency because of unbelievably intense wildfires that are causing intense damage and loss of life in the state. This is climate that's, change. Wait, that's one point on the triangle. Right. The other point in the triangle is Scott Pruitt, who just yesterday uh, said that he doesn't think carbon dioxide uh, produced by human activity has uh, any relationship to climate change. And oil and gas development, which in Oklahoma is contributing its dose of carbon dioxide and methane to climate change. There you have it, a closed triangle. Wow. And it's ironic. Uh, it's, so, it's beyond ironic. I, I would think that a lot of Oklahomans would think that it's cri criminal, if not legally, at least morally, um, you, you said that the, there's an absolute consensus among the scientists that these earthquake swarms or these, these earthquake, all this seismicity in, in Oklahoma is a direct consequence of fracking. Um, there's also, a, a, you know, an absolute consensus among uh, climate scientists, 100 uh, percent of them who are not funded by the fossil fuel industry, that carbon dioxide does cause uh, climate change and that humans are, are heating up the planet. And yet... More than half of all Republican voters don't believe that because their politicians are bought off by the fossil fuel industry. So I'm wondering, you know, there may be a scientific consensus that Oklahoma is being beat up by the oil companies. Is there a political and social consensus in Oklahoma as to that? Or are they the victims of propaganda campaigns like, like the rest of us are with regard to climate change more generally? Well, I'm, I'm certainly not on the ground in Oklahoma. I'm not an expert on sociology and politics, but you use the word beat up. The people of Oklahoma uh, are experiencing right now the consequences uh, of this intense increase in uh, frequency and magnitude of induced seismicity, and they're also suffering the consequences of an intense climate change-induced, unnatural, extreme wildfire. So, yes, people of Oklahoma are having um, nuisance, certainly. That's yeah. a legal term. And they're certainly experiencing loss of property value because their properties have been devalued. And they're increased, seeing an increase in the cost of their homeowner's insurance. So who's supposed to pay for all that? Who are the responsible parties? The, the people of Oklahoma? Well, 
in a sense, they vote people in, yeah. uh, they vote people out. <laughs> Yeah. But certainly the root cause is the oil and gas industry's initially initial resistance, reluctance to admit that their activities had a direct consequence on the people of Oklahoma. Yeah, and of course, the people of Oklahoma like the oil and gas industry by and large because it's a, a major employer. Uh, it's a major source of tax revenue and income uh, in the way of employment for the people of Oklahoma. So there you have it, the classic conflict between wealth and health associated with extractive industries. It's like where, a, is, where is the right and just place to be? Up for the people of Oklahoma to decide. Yeah, it's it's like a, 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 an abusive spousal relationship. I mean, we see the same thing with coal miners in West Virginia. We're down to yes. nationwide, there are only 75,000 coal jobs. There were 200,000 solar jobs created just last year. And you know, nationwide, only 75,000 coal miners, and yet, You've got, you know, uh, uh, an entire political party and a presidential candidate and, and local candidates all over West Virginia, Western, Western Pennsylvania, you know, saying, oh, we're going to bring back coal. Uh, you know, it, it's, it's, it's like a, 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 an abusive spouse, you know, we're, we're, we're going to, you know, exploit you and beat you up and then, and then give you a little money, by the way, just, just to keep you happy. That's, I think that's an, an appropriate analogy. And to continue the analogy, obviously we have to find ways of putting many of those coal miners who have lost their jobs uh, to work in industries that are cleaner for the environment, better for their health, and are higher paying. Same thing is true in Oklahoma. Oklahoma has tremendous wind resources and tremendous solar resources. The people of Oklahoma, should they choose to do this, could decide to, over some period of time, decrease the production of oil and gas in their state. And of course, that would decrease employment in oil and gas and income from oil and gas. But they can more than compensate by an increase in taxation and tax revenue and employment and income by producing renewable energy by way of wind and sun. Oklahoma is in a perfect condition to do that. Yeah, they could become uh... Is it possible that given current technology, they could become literally completely independent of fossil fuels? Oh, absolutely. Wow. On a statewide basis, absolutely. No yeah. question. Yeah, that's that's absolutely remarkable. Uh, Dr. Anthony, Tony Ingrafia, uh, PhD, D Dwight Baum, Professor of Engineering Emeritus at Cornell University. Dr. Dr. Ingrafia, it's always great talking with you. Say, thanks so it's much for talking. It's great talking to you, Tom. Thanks again. Thank you. Keep up the great work, Bye. sir. We'll be back. We'll be back with your calls here on Anything Goes Friday. Stick around.